Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Ashley Temple, Emily Mont, Micah Bird Kaiju, Eric Carr, Michaela, Corinne Bean, Luke Davies, Elizabeth Kruger, Cody Jarrett, Lydia Council, Shara Rossichan, The Zen Scientist, Rexy Adar, David Durand, Anne Polman, Neil Kelly, Zhe Gray, Ian Morin, Sean McMahon, and Xander, Wizard of the Citadel under the Hidden Rivers, etc. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look at our rewards. Rusty Quill presents The Magnus Archives Episode 142 Scrutiny So, what happened? I don't... Uh, look, I just need to, to talk to a, a manager or something. Okay, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a manager. Go on. Okay, well, I'd like to, to talk to you about one of your staff. Go on. There's, uh, there's been... I'm being harassed. Okay, um... Just, uh, just let me grab a form. Uh, one second. Uh, okay, okay. Um, what? Would you mind telling me what happened? Uh, what they did? He. Ah, all right. Um, did he? Did he look like he hadn't slept in like a week? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, he's right. been. Yeah, I think he's been uh, following me, kind of. Yeah, I see. Well, he's not here at the moment, so I mean. Yeah, why don't you tell me what happened? Look, it's... I, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Well, you know, uh, weird is what we do. <laughs> okay. Just just tell me what happened. Um, please, I I won't judge. All right. Uh, so you... You've, uh, you've got to understand my job, okay? Um... I work for Thames Water, uh, mainly pipes and stuff. Like I, I mean, I'm a qualified engineer, but you know, mostly it's, it's just manual stuff, like digging and replacing pipe. Sometimes I've got to, you know, there are actual sewers involved. It's not really where I saw myself end up, you know. <laughs> yeah, but who does? <laughs> we don't all get to build Formula One engines. <laughs> anyway, like, it's fine. I actually get paid quite a bit more than the rest of the crew because you know if there's if, if there's something that goes wrong or, or needs an engineer, you know here I am. Sorry. Uh, the point is, I uh, I do some work underground. Did some work underground. Look, I know, I know this doesn't have anything to do with. Just about five years ago, we were doing some work under Kentish Town. It was pretty nasty. Do you know what a fatberg is? No, I, it, don't worry, don't look it up. Seriously, don't. You know, it was just... It was a bad job. I had to spend a while down there. And now I don't know if there's something with us and, and the work we were doing. Or maybe just the brickwork wasn't right anymore. Maybe it was rotten or, or unstable. Or, or the place kind of... The place kind of collapsed on me. You know, just one moment I'm stood there, torch in hand, and the next I've got a shooting pain all up my arm and I can feel God knows how much rubble on top of me and it's absolutely pitch dark. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't need to tell you. Look, I've, I've never been so scared. It was like the world went away. Must have been a full five seconds. 
I thought it was dead. Excuse me. It's all right. Just take your time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know how long I was down there. Well, well I do. It was three hours. They told me. After. But it felt like... God, it felt like it could have been weeks. I've never had a, a great sense of time and just... gone. Everything. Every bit of light or sound or, or anything that changed, that said time was passing. There was nothing. Before that, I never really thought about time, you know? But now... Yeah. But I was lying there, panicking, screaming, just trying to make any noise, any movement that didn't hurt like hell. And I... Okay. I felt something. No, I felt someone grab my ankle. At first it was great, I had this, this huge wave of relief, right? Someone had found me, they were getting me out. But no, it didn't feel right. It wasn't... It was cold, right? Like... Like old stone or, or wet sand. It felt like rough and and like the fingers weren't I don't know it felt like they, they weren't in the right places and then I started thinking and I realised something the way it, it was grabbing me you know holding my leg there was it had to have been coming upwards from below me and there was no one else down there when that tunnel collapsed Absolutely no one, I am sure. So then I start screaming again and kicking, thrashing about. It hurts, but I mean, I'm scared out of my mind, but the, the, the hand, it just grips tighter and I can feel its fingernails just, it, it, it started pulling. It was pulling down, dragging me down into the earth and... I, I don't know, just this close to just breaking, just absolutely shattering and, and then a slab of stone came away in front of me and there was daylight and, and Abby, one of the work crew, was staring at me and, and yeah, just like that it was gone. But the bruise stuck around. Horrid, muddy bruises where the fingers had grabbed me. So, it, it took a long time to get over that. I mean, that's not weird, right? I mean, it was a bad time. You know, it, it stays with you. It was signed off, what, I think about six months with the injuries. I had pretty bad uh, nightmares, claustrophobia, I mean, obviously, right? But uh, but but I did my physio, um, you know, talked with, with the counsellor they gave me. Look, I did everything I was supposed to, and yeah, I, I guess I was fine. You know, once the bruises were gone, I... Well, it's easy to blame memory, right? You know, hallucination... Coincidence, all the classic shite you tell yourself. Life went back to normal. I... I was fine. Until... About two weeks ago. And that was when you met... Ju uh, one of our employees. That's when he showed up. You know the coffee shop uh, just next to Pimlico? Uh, the, the nice one. Well, I I actually had had a date there. You know, cute guy, met online. She's sporty, which, which I kind of like. Look, it doesn't 
<laughs> it doesn't matter. Anyway, I get a latte and, and, and sit down waiting for uh, Grant. I want to say Grant. Or Gar- Gareth? Gary? Anyway, look, he's run late and, and, and I'm just reading. There's this creep in, in the corner. Look, your guy, he just keeps staring at me like, like properly staring like it is super intense and and real weird like he knows me but I sure as hell do not know him I I try to ignore him look I just I just read my book and every time I look up there he is watching me you know I'm about to say something you know like when in comes Gary, Gareth, Gavin, and suddenly, hey, <laughs> it's a date. And I really didn't want his first impression of me to be, you know, me yelling at some creeper in the corner. So I just swap chairs so that I've got my back to your colleague and get on with it. Didn't really matter, you know, in the end, Gareth was, uh, was a bust. You know, not like, you know, I mean, he, he was fine, I guess, but... There's just nothing really there between us, you know, just a nice boring coffee with a kind of dull man. <laughs> Took about an hour and he clearly wasn't feeling it either, so we, you know, we just called it. I mean, I think we actually shook hands <laughs> when he left, which, I mean, tells you something, right? So, look, I'm packing up, all done, and, and I just, I just sort of turn, you know, just, just to check if he's still there, and he is standing right behind me, like, like a few inches from my face. Look, it's messed up. And I start to ask him, you know, what the hell, man, you know? Like, but he just starts talking. Slowly. But real intense. He says he works here at the, the Magnus Institute. And I say, what even is that? And he says, he wants my story. He says he needs to hear what happened to me. And I I want to tell him to just to go away. I want to, to, to kick him and run. But I I sit down and I start to tell him everything about the job, about the collapse, about the hand. More than I told you even, and, and as I do, it's, it's like I'm there again. Like I can feel it grab my ankle, a, a cold, dead hand, and I just, I just can't stop talking. Like I cannot shut up. Are you alright? No. No, I'm not. Of course I'm not. I felt like... Like I was throwing up all those feelings again and I wanted to... to scream. But instead, I just... sat... and calmly told him my life story and he just... watched me. His eyes, like, his eyes, like, were, were drinking in every fragment of my misery. I can't. It. And then it was over. And he looked. He looked at me like he'd just eaten, like, a perfectly cooked steak you know what he said he said thank you thank you just like that like like reliving the worst parts of my whole life were just a bit of a a favour that I'd done him and then he left and, and I I just sat there 
and cried for a while. <laughs> that wasn't the end. You, you've seen him since? No, not... You kinda... I feel like I do. I've been dreaming of that tunnel again. Nightmares. Oh god, awful nightmares. Nightmares with where the hand keeps pulling and I go deeper and deeper and, and deeper into... It takes me places I do not want to go. And he's there the whole time just... Watching me. Watching me scream and thrash and... He is all eyes. He is all eyes. Look, I know that's not... <laughs> that is my brain. I'm not blaming him for, for being in my dreams. You know, I guess I can't. <laughs> That's absurd, right? It's not... But I feel like I'm seeing him when I'm awake as well. I've been... I've been having a lot of problems since he talked to me. Since I talked to him. Oh, since I told my story, the the claustrophobia is back, you know, worse than it ever was, and and I can't do my job. I have these these scream and panic attacks every time I try, and what am I supposed to do? Like, it feels like. Like every time I'm even slightly underground, I can't even go into a shop basement anymore without feeling that <laughs> hand. Every time I do, every time I get that panic just rising up my throat, I see him. He's there. Not when I look properly, but just at the edge, the corner of my eye, and he's gone. I mean, maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm. Maybe I just I met him once in a coffee shop, and he was a creep, and it messed me up. But that's enough, right? That is enough. So. So I want to put in a complaint, like, like a proper complaint. I don't want to go to the police. I mean, I doubt they would. They wouldn't even, you know, let me get this far now, would they? But sorry. So thanks, I guess. Okay. Um. Right. Well, firstly, I'm re I'm really sorry that this happened. Um. In in terms of next just, steps, I just. I don't know, you know, talk to him, I guess. Let's just tell him. Look, look, I mean, that. it's not okay. You know, right? I'm not... I don't know what he did, but, it, you know, he can't just go around and, well, you know, just keep doing... No, I, I, I understand. Good. Well, you... I just... I don't want to see him again, all right? Ever. Hold on, no, hold on, I just I, need I, to... No, that's it, that's my complaint. You know, I, I, I can't... This place, I... I can't be here. I have to... Uh, no, bye. Uh, but you didn't give me your... Name. What the hell do I do with that? I mean, Christ, John, that's... That's not okay. Oh, that can't... That can't... I mean, it's not him, is it? 
not not really. Is it, what addiction, instinct, maybe mind control, something like that? I can't believe he'd choose to do something like that. No, no, I, I can't think like that though. I I can't let myself because I mean, if if he's already gone, then all of this is just. The worst part is I don't even want to talk to him about it. I'm just... I suppose I'm just getting comfortable with the distance. Cut off. <laughs> Lonely. Mind you, Peter's not wrong. It really is easier than actually just trying to communicate with people. I should probably try to get him this tape. Let him know what happened. That someone came into... But then, <laughs> would that just come across as an accusation? Because I don't want to... And then, and then I guess he'd hear this bit as well, so... I, I, what do I do? Go away. Come in! Hey. Um, hi? You mind? Can I help you? I, I saw someone come out, so I, I thought that, you know... Do you, do you want something? No, I'm just... Just ignore me. Continue with... Whatever. Are you alright? Yeah. Just a, a bit empty around here, you know? Not really. Melanie's out and... John and Basir are still off. A bit worried. But they can take care of themselves, you know? Again, not really. <laughs> no one talks to me anymore. Because they reckon you're working for the bad guy? Pretty much. Don't you? Oh, I mean, you're definitely working for something evil, but so are we. Yeah. Seems as plenty to go around these days. It doesn't bother you? Didn't used to. And now? Well, there's me less than trying to go alone. At least now it's on my terms, better than being blackmailed into it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. They told you about Elias, right? Yeah. Basira said, Don't like him being alive. Try not to think about it too much. Don't want to get too angry. Start to hear the blood. Sure. Can't hear his lies from prison, though, so that's something. I thought you believed him. You were doing all of his dirty work. Well, wasn't willing to call his bluff. Not the same thing as believing. Just too big a risk. Not for Melanie. Or maybe she was the only one with any sense. Even if he was telling the truth, if we all died, there are worse things. How was it? Don't want to talk about it. I listened to your old statement. Wasn't your partner down there? Yeah. Didn't find him. You don't want to go get him? I'm not going back. Hmm. I thought you'd at least tried, or... I said I don't want to talk about it. I know. Not nice being interrogated, is it? I... Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, Martin. It's alright. It wasn't you. Not really. No, it was. I hate a lot of what I did back then. Doesn't mean I'm not responsible for it. Doesn't mean it wasn't me. Anyway. So what's this field trip they're on? They, uh, they didn't tell you? <laughs> no, I... What? Daisy, where have they gone? You know that town in Norway? What? No, what? what? You, you don't mean Niala's son? Yeah... They reckon there's a ritual they need to, you know. Yeah, but Peter didn't even... Ma I don't believe this. Sorry. Shouldn't have said anything. No, no, it's... Thank you, I just... Oh, for God's sake, can he not just stay safe for like, like ten minutes? I don't think that's an option for him anymore. Yeah, I mean, sure, but he just... He doesn't think. He always just immediately charges straight off into danger with whatever, whatever half ass plan occurs to him at the time. I don't get it. What's to get? What? I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. What? You used to see it all the time back in the force, especially with the section. Not like there's normal trauma, you know? But it's pretty common. 
the most important thing becomes control, engaging on your own terms. Even when it's stupid or dangerous. Anything to not feel helpless. Oh, God. And, of course, for John, there's survivor's guilt in there, too. He thinks he's not human. Makes him very... self-destructive. Yeah, well, we've all had trauma. And everyone's changed. Yeah. I suppose. You're... You're pretty observant, you know. Detective, remember? Yeah, you did mention. I would have thought Basira would have had more sense, though. When Basira and I were partners, I'd see this happen sometimes. She can read a situation like no one I know always seems to know the right move, but for all her research, she never wants to put a plan together. I think she just hates all the unknowns, the variables, uh, contingencies. If she spots an advantage, she'll grab it and trust herself to figure out the details as she goes. Hmm. It's worked so far. I mean, I guess. It still sounds really dangerous. Yeah. Wanted to go with them, protect them, but... Life's always more complicated than that, isn't it? Not really. You recording, or... Hmm? Oh. oh, no, there was... Hang on. The Magnus Archives is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. Today's episode was written by Jonathan Sims and directed by Alexander J. Newell. To subscribe, view associated material, or join our Patreon, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill. Visit us on Facebook or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Join our communities on the forum via the website or on Reddit at r slash the Magnus Archives. Thanks for listening.